Today I'm going to be walking you through the assembly of the Mini ITX Corsair Obsidian Series 250D. For this build I'm using an Intel Core i7-4770K paired with a Gigabyte GA-Z87N Wi-Fi motherboard and 16 gigabytes of Dominator Platinum DDR3-2400 Cas10 memory. I'm also using an EVGA GeForce GTX 660Ti a 256 gigabyte Corsair Neutron SSD, and a Corsair RM750 modular power supply with white braided cables. On cooling duties, I have a Corsair Hydro Series H100i, and I'll be using purple AF LED fans to give it some flair. Start by removing the two thumb screws that secure the top panel, followed by two thumb screws each for the two side panels. Then pull and slide each of those panels off. Next, remove the four thumb screws that secure the drive cage cover and remove that plate. Then remove the last two thumb screws that secure the power supply bracket and remove it. Since I'm going to be installing a dual slot graphics card, I'll remove the two thumb screws that hold the expansion slot covers in place and then remove those covers. The five and a quarter inch drive tray is held into place by standard screws. Removing this tray will make installation of components much easier, so remove it as well by unscrewing the retaining screws and sliding it off of the rails and out of the case. I'll start the assembly by replacing the front fan with our 140mm purple LED fan. Remove the front panel by pressing on the corners and popping it off, then squeeze the two tabs of the dust filter and tilt it out. Unscrew each of the four corners of the stock fan. With the stock fan in hand, unscrew the grill on the exhaust side of the fan. The grill exists to keep the cabling inside the case from interfering with the fan's operation, so we'll reattach it to the Purpa LED fan we'll be using as an intake. Finally, screw the new fan back into the mount in the front of the case. Installing the motherboard is actually the most involved part of the build process, especially if you're using aftermarket cooling like I am. First. Pull the pin to open the socket, then remove the guard cap. The processor is keyed in a specific way to prevent it from being installed improperly. Place the chip in the socket, then lock it into place. Next, align the H100i's backplate, making sure to position it around the screws that hold the socket into place. Hold the backplate in place, then flip the motherboard over and insert the four mounting screws, starting with opposite corners. You can install the memory in advance. Open the clips on the memory slots, then gently but firmly insert the DIMMs until the clips snap into place, locking the DIMMs into the slots. The motherboard itself is now ready to be installed. Next, I'll install the motherboard's I.O. shield. Snap it into the opening in the back of the case. It can be helpful to try to snap in one side, then hold that side in to snap in the other side. Either way, make sure it's all the way into the shield opening. Slide the motherboard in by lining up its I.O. with the shield and the four mounting points with the standoffs on the motherboard tray. Secure the motherboard by screwing in each corner. After that, I'll need to connect the case headers. You'll want to check your motherboard's manual to see where each one is. First, connect the audio header that hooks up to the microphone and headphone jacks in the front of the case. This is usually near the expansion slot. Next, connect the USB 3.0 header. Note that the standard for this particular type of connector is fairly poorly designed. The socket on our motherboard wasn't especially tight, so whenever the cables were jostled too much, the header had a tendency to pop out. Keep an eye on it as you're building and re-secure it as needed. Finally, connect the power and reset buttons and indicator lights. Most motherboards will have a diagram printed on the board itself, but you can check the manual as well. The positive line for each connector is going to be on your left with the print on the connector facing you. Using a modular power supply can make assembly in the 250D much easier. I'm going to connect the power cables to the motherboard in advance and route them through the power supply bay so that when it's time to install the power supply, all I have to do is connect the cables to the unit itself. First, take the beefy 24 pin cable and snap it into the port on the motherboard. This may take some pressure, doubly so if you're using individually sleeved cables like I am. Then, install the auxiliary 12 volt cable for the CPU. This connector tends to be split into two fours. Most motherboards use all eight pins, but the board I'm using for this build only needs four, so I've split the connector. Plug in the properly keyed connector. 
Finally, just route the cables down into the bottom cable well of the case. To install an SSD, remove one of the drive sleds from the drive chamber through the rear of the case. Snap the pins in the sled into the sides of the SSD. Next, to make installation easier, connect the modular SATA power cable and the SATA data cable to the back of the drive. Route the cables through the drive chamber and out of the back, then slide the tray back into the chamber. Connect the SATA cable to the appropriate header on the motherboard, then route the power cable to the power supply chamber. Installing the Hydro Series H100i into the Obsidian Series 250D can require a little bit of finesse, but it definitely works. I've already installed the backplate for the cooler on the motherboard, so now I need to prep the cooler itself. I'm using AF120 LED fans instead of the more efficient stock fans or two of our aftermarket static pressure fans, but the trade-off in performance shouldn't be too devastating since I'm not going to be pushing the i7-4770K that hard. Start by installing the fans as intakes for the radiator as shown here, using long screws included with the H100i. Next, slide the radiator into the 250D. There's exactly enough space between the mounting bars and the motherboard for the complete H100i to fit, though it will likely require a little bit of pressure and shimmying to get it into place. Affix the radiator to the frame using eight shorter screws. If for whatever reason your H100i isn't brand new and doesn't have thermal material pre-applied to it, put a dot of thermal paste about the size of a pea onto the center of the CPU. Then slide the water block with appropriate mounting bracket onto the four mounting posts and use the included screw caps to secure it. You'll want to make sure the pressure is even, which you can do by alternating corners with the screw caps similar to the way you would loosen or tighten the lug nuts on a tire. After that, connect the water block's fan header to the motherboard CPU fan header, the two fan inputs from the water block to the fans affixed to the radiator, and finally, the power lead to the same cable used to power the SSD. At this point, I realized I forgot to connect the front intake fan, but I caught it, so now is as good time as any to connect it to the remaining fan header on the motherboard. Finally, connect the included USB cable to the water block and then to an open USB header on the motherboard. The H100i is a tight fit, so be sure to spin the radiator fans with your fingers to check for obstructions and make sure no cables are going to get into the blades or rub against the fan hubs. Next, install the graphics card. Lift the cover on the expansion slots, then shimmy the card into place until it snaps into the slot on the motherboard. Bring the expansion slot cover back down, then screw the graphics card into place in both expansion slots. Connect a PCI Express power lead modular cable to the graphics card, then route it down behind the card. The top of the cable may stick up and require pressure later on to seal the case. This is normal. Installing a driver peripheral in the 5 and a quarter inch drive bay is fairly simple. First, squeeze the two tabs on the inside of the case to remove the drive bay shield. Next, reinstall the 5 and a quarter inch drive tray by lining up the four notches. It will undoubtedly require a little bit of pressure to hold into place. There are six different places to secure the drive tray, but you really only need to screw in the two middle mounts. Insert the optical drive from the front and line it up with the front bezel of the case, then use the latch to lock it into place. Connect a SATA cable to the back of the optical drive and then to the motherboard, and tuck it down in the gap between the drive and the memory. Fish the remaining SATA power lead from the cable connected to the SSD and H100i and connect it to the back of the optical drive. To install the power supply, figure out how you want to orient it. The 250D allows you to orient the power supply's intake beneath the motherboard tray, thus pulling warm air from the bottom of the CPU through the power supply and exhausting it out of the back. Alternatively, you can orient the power supply's intake to the bottom of the case, giving it its own source of cool air. Since the RM750 power supply is not liable to be stressed too heavily by our combination of components, I'm going to orient it with the intake facing the bottom of the motherboard tray. Attach the bracket to the power supply with four screws, but loosely so that it has some wiggle room. Pull the modular cables through the power supply bay of the case and attach them all to the back of the power supply. If you're planning on including additional peripherals like I am later, attach whatever additional power leads you need to now. Now slide the power supply into the bay. Then attach the power supply bracket to the case with two thumb screws and tighten the four screws used to affix the power supply itself to the bracket. Since we're not going to install any more drives today, reattach the drive bay plate to the back of the case and secure it with the four thumb screws. 
You can feel free to skip this step, but I'm going to give this build a little more flair by including a Corsair Link lighting node. To start, peel the adhesive from the backs of the lighting strips and attach them to the underside of the top panel, preferably under the window clamps to make sure they stay out of the way. Next, attach another lighting strip to the rear interior surface of the case, then attach and route its connector cable. The lighting node came with a small, thin Corsair Link cable. Connect that to the open header on the H100i water block next to the USB connector, then route it down to the bottom of the case to join the two lighting strip connectors. Attach the two strip connectors and the Corsair Link cable to the lighting node. Then connect the 4-pin Molex connector of the lighting node to an open Molex connector from the power supply. Tuck the node and cabling into the bottom well of the 250D. We're finally ready to close up the build. Slide the top panel onto the case and affix it with thumb screws. Then, slide the notched side panels back onto the case and secure them with thumb screws. Align the bottom of the dust filter with the catches in front of the case and snap it into place. Then align the front panel with the same catches and lock it into place. The 250D build is complete. Now just plug it in and power it on. If everything went well, the system should hum to life. If not, you should be able to retrace your steps and figure out where things went wrong. Thank you for taking the time to join us for this guide to the 250D's assembly. This is Dustin Sklavos with Corsair, signing off.